Okay, so this is how your Yorkie's looking, and you can see how I went all the way down to the tip of the nose, and then I have the thickness how I like it. So now we're just going to put a few hairs underneath the nose. So you can go ahead and turn your Yorkie over, and then just below the nose, you're going to take your tapestry needle and just get a little bit of a stitch. And then these are the hairs that are going to hang down underneath the nose, like this. So you just want to see how long you want your hairs to be. And I think I want mine about, about like that, maybe a little bit shorter, just like that. And then once you have the size that you want, you're going to do it the same way. You're just going to take, and you're just going to take little bits, go right here a stitch underneath the nose and just make sure that the hairs are the same size and then you're just going to keep looping taking little bits of stitches underneath the nose and just making sure that they're the same size and you can just keep on looping a stitch under the nose. Make sure that your loop, that you get the loops all the same size. So just check them. Make sure and don't worry if they're not perfect, you can just trim them later. So you can see, and just go ahead and just trim the excess. And now what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing that you did on the snout, is you want to take a loop. Be careful you don't pull too tightly here because you'll pull the loops from the other side. So go ahead and cut and then loosely tie your knot. You can always tie the knot a little bit tighter later. First you want to just get your knots so you don't pull from the other side. your loops, you just tie a knot, that one I can tie a little snug, and then, then you can start tying a little bit tighter, because you know that all the hairs are the same length. make sure that all the hairs you tie a knot and then come back and then I'll show you the next step. Alright so you should be done putting the hairs underneath here and you can see how I went ahead and added a few more hairs under the nose here and it came out nicely. Okay, so now we're going to work on the hair that goes up in here. So what you're going to do is just take your tapestry needle with some yarn and you're going to start up at the top here and just take about a stitch, about this much, with your tapestry needle. And for this one, however long you want your hair to be, hanging from the sides here. So you can always trim it later, so it's better to leave it longer 
than too short. So I'm going to leave about that much. And then you're going to just go through the same stitch here with your tapestry needle. And you're just going to pull a loop. And you want to make sure that your loop is the same length on both sides. And you're just going to go all the way down to here. So you're just going to keep taking little bites. And just make sure your loops are the same length. And then keep doing that. And then keep doing your loops all the way down to here. And then come back and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you should be back sewing your loops in all the way down to about right there. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to take and tie your knot. So you're going to go ahead and grab a loop. And you're going to go ahead and cut. Now, this is the part where you want to be very careful because you don't want to pull your loops from the other side. So just make sure that when you're tying your knots that you tie them loosely at first. And then when you don't feel a pull, then you can make it maybe a little bit snugger on there. So go ahead and then you're going to cut every loop on here and you're going to tie knots and you want to make sure that you tie your knot to a strand that's closest to it. And then just do that on both sides and then come back and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now you should have finished putting your hair on the top part <clears throat> and you can put as much hair as you want on there but that's about how much that I'm going to use excuse me <clears throat> so now for the next step what you're going to do is you're going to do the hair that goes up over so you're going to start right above the eye and just grab a little stitch make sure you don't get your hair tangled in. Now on this one, you're going to want to leave the hair hanging back. And I'm going to make it about that long. So you want to have about that much length because it's just going to go in the back. And then you can go ahead and loop in the same stitch You're going to make it the same length. As the other one and then just put it in the back like that. And then just make sure <clears throat> that your yarn that you're working with doesn't get tangled up. And then you're going to take a small bite next to it. A little stitch about that much. And then just check, make sure you're getting the right size. And then you just put them in the back. And you're going to keep doing this, taking small stitches, and you're going to go all the way across to the top of this eye and then come back and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you should be finished and you can see how you went and you looped the yarn across 
to the other eye. So now you're just going to turn it around. And all your excess yarn that you had, you can go ahead and snip that. And then you're just going to take each loop. You can start from one of the sides. Make sure you don't get tangled up. And you're just going to take and cut it. And then you're just going to take and tie a knot. So you can take your strands here and then just tie a knot. Make sure you don't tie it too tight again because you don't want to pull your other loops. And then you just keep tying knots. And keep doing that, and when you come back, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you should be all done tying your knots, and you have the hair nice, and you can go ahead and trim it if you want, to the length that you want. And I'm going to keep mine like that, and so this is how your Yorkie should looking be looking up to this point. So now we're going to make the flower. You can go ahead and set your Yorkie aside for now, and then go ahead and get the color that you want for your flower, and then come back and I'll show you how to make the So this is the color that I'm using. It's from Red Heart, uh, but it's an uh, orchid, and actually on video it looks like a deeper purple, but it's actually a light purple color, but you can use whatever color that you want for your flower. So. For this one, what you're going to do is you're just going to chain four, and I'm just going to use my G-hook still, crochet hook, but you can use any size that you want. The bigger you go on the hook, the bigger the flower, and then of course smaller hook, smaller flower. And so you have your slip stitch, which is the first knot, and I'll show you that again. I'm going a little bit fast on that. Okay, so what I do is I just loop it over like that, just make a loop, and then I hold it in place, put your hook through, and then I hold it with my middle finger and thumb, so I have the yarn, hold it, I hold my yarn just like that, go ahead and yarn over, and then turn the hook upside down and go through the loop you just made, and that's a simple slip stitch. And now you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And now you're going to go back into the first stitch that you made. You're going to yarn over. And then you're just going to go keep going with your hook through the initial stitch and then you just did a slip stitch. So then you have a little bit of a ring here and that's the ring that we're going to be working through. So the first thing you're going to do is just chain three again. So one, two, three, and then you're going to do a double chain. Actually you're going to single stitch into the center do a single stitch and then we're going to do that five times. So go ahead and chain three. One, two, three, and then single stitch into the center of the ring. And that's two. Chain three again. One, two, three, and then single chain into the center of the ring. And so we have three loops, and we're going to do that for five. So the last two I'm going to do a little bit fast. And you have five loops. And 
and you're going to slip stitch into your next loop that you did. So here is your first chain three loop. Go ahead and slip stitch into that loop and you can see how you have one loop here, two, three, four, five. We'll be working in each of those loops. So go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And then pull some extra yarn here. And we're going to do a double, double crochet into that loop. So go ahead and yarn over. Go into that chain three loop, that initial chain three loop. Yarn over. And you have three on the loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over and draw through two loops. You have two left. Yarn over and go through the last two. So now you have two double chains into that first chain three loop. And we're going to do three more for a total of five double chain double crochet into that loop. So yarn over, go into the same loop, yarn over, you have three, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And that's three double crochet, yarn over, go into the same loop, yarn over, three on the hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. And that's four double crochet in the same loop. Last one. So you have five double crochet in the same loop. Now you're going to slip stitch into the next chain three loop that you made. So how you're going to do that is just go through the next loop and pull it through the loop on your hook. And now you're going to chain three. One, two, three. So now you have one petal and we're working on our next petal and we're going to do five, four more double crochet into that same chain three loop. And you're going to do that same thing all the way around until you get back to the beginning. And then come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you should have finished your five petal on the flower. So we're going to slip stitch into the first petal that we had created. So go ahead and with your hook you're going to go into the first stitch, yarn over, and then pull your hook through both loops on the hook. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be working into the spoke around the flower. So here is the first spoke that we're going to work into. So you just take your hook, go into the center of it, just like that, and then yarn over, and then you have two loops on the hook. So go ahead and yarn over and pull through both on the hook. And then you're going to go ahead and chain two, one, two, and then you're going to go around the next spoke on the flower, which is right there. And then you're going to do a single chain. So you have both loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both, chain two, one, two, and then you're going to go around the next spoke, single chain, and then you're going to chain two, one, two, and then go around the next spoke, chain two, and then you're going to go around the next spoke, chain two, and then where you split the spoke on the beginning, you're going to go back in between, just like that, and just do a single chain, chain two, and then you're going to slip stitch into your beginning chain. So you're going to go into your beginning chain. Actually, you can go underneath it in that right before it actually. Just like that, right before that beginning chain, right there. Yarn over, pull through, and then you want to pull through the initial loop for a slip stitch. And then that first chain two 
loop that you created. You're going to do a slip stitch into there. So you're going to yarn over and just pull through the loop on your hook. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And that's going to be your first double crochet. And you're going to do two more double crochet into the same loop. So yarn over, go into the loop, yarn over, and you have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, go through two, yarn over, and go through two. I'm going to do one more double crochet into the same loop. And then you're going to slip stitch into the next chain two loop that you created. Go ahead and do a slip stitch. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And do two more double crochet into the same loop. And you can see how you're making your petals. And you're going to do the same thing all the way around until you get back to where you started. And then come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you should be back where you started. And we're going to do a slip stitch into that beginning stitch. So go ahead and take your hook into that beginning stitch. Yarn over. And then just pull through both loops on the hook. Now you're going to finish off. Go ahead and yarn over. Pull through and just leave enough yarn for sewing the flower onto your project. And you have your pretty flower all done. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a bow. So what we're going to do first is just do your slip stitch. And how I do that is I just cross it over just like that. Go ahead and put your hook through. And then I just hold it with my middle finger and my thumb, and then I yarn over, and then just pull it through, and that's your slip stitch. So go ahead and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to slip stitch back into your beginning chain. Yarn over and then just pull through both. And then you have your little circle. Okay, so now we're going to chain four. So you yarn over one, two, three, four. And we're going to do five treble crochets into the center of the ring. And how you're going to do that is just going to yarn over twice. One, two, go into the center of the ring, yarn over, and now you have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two. Now you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, go through two two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through the last two. And you're going to do that five times into the center. One, two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. And you have three treble crochet. Four, So you have five treble crochet into the center of the loop. And your work looks just like this. Now go ahead and chain four. One, two, three, and four. And you're going to slip stitch into the center of the ring. So you're going to yarn over, pull through and then pull through the loop on the hook. So you did your slip stitch, and that's the half of your bow right there. So now we're going to do the other half. Go ahead and chain four. One, two, three, four, and we're going to do five treble crochet into the center of the loop. So yarn over, yarn over, go into the center of the loop, 
You have four, loose on your hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over and go through two. And that's three. Four. Five. So you have five treble crochet. Go ahead and chain four. One, two, three, four. And you're going to slip stitch into the center of the ring. And now we're going to finish off. So yarn over and pull through. And you're going to pull enough, a bunch of yarn here because you're going to tie it around the bow. And here's your bow. So you're just going to take that long end of the yarn and you're just going to wrap it around the center. And then you're going to hold it in the center and shape your bow. Now if you want a bigger bow, then you can use a larger sized hook if you want. So once you have it shaped how you like, turn it over. And then on the back, just tie a knot. You're going to hide the knot on the back. Like that. And I like to tie it three times. Make it nice and secure. And then you have your pretty bow. Now if you want a bigger bow, then you just use a larger sized crochet hook. Alright, so now on your Yorkie, you could either put your bow on there or you can use your flower you can sew your flower on there whichever you prefer I like the bow so I'm going to go ahead and use the bow on mine so go ahead and take your tapestry needle and you're going to take the smaller portion of the bow and just put that on your tapestry needle and then you're going to position the bow where you want it on the Yorkie and then just go through and then you're just going to go through the head Take a little stitch and then pull the bow down and you can go ahead and tie a knot. leave that strand for now. And then you're going to take your other longer end for sewing. And you're also going to go into the head in the back. You're going to take the two pieces and tie a knot. And now you just want to take your bow, make sure you have 
only the hair that you sewed on from the front. Move that to the back. And then take your tapestry needle and then just come up through the bow. And then position it how you like. And then just go down alongside where you had put the wrapped the yarn around the bow. You just want to go alongside this way. Come out towards the back. Keep positioning your bow how you like it. And then you can come up through the other side of the bow. And then come down. And then you just want to kind of bunch the hair in the front and finish sewing your bow down and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, and here's your Yorkie all finished except for the tail. We're going to do the tail next but on the back you still have the loose strands from the bow so you can go ahead and make sure that you have a good knot tied back here. And then you can just take and then just cut it because this is going to be buried underneath the hair. And then you can trim it up how you like on the back. And then in the front, you can trim your hair also how you like it. So if you wanted, you could cut the hair on the sides. make sure that you get it even. And then you're all done with the Yorkie, except for the tail. So we're going to do the tail next. So go ahead and get the color yarn that you used for the body. And we're going to do the magic circle first. Okay, so go ahead and drape the yarn across your four fingers and take your thumb to stabilize. And then wrap it around your two middle fingers two times and hold it with your pinky and your thumb. And we're going to do six single chains into the magic circle. So go ahead and go under both loops of your G hook, crochet hook, yarn over and pull under, yarn over and pull through that loop. And that's your knot. Now we're going to do six single chains. So go under the loop, yarn over, two loops on the hook, yarn over, and that's one, two, three, four, five, So then go ahead and take with your forefinger and thumb and hold at the base of the six single chains and then pull to close the magic circle. Take the other loose end and pull on that to close the magic circle. And then your work should look like this. And we're going to do one single chain into each stitch. So here in the next stitch, one single chain next stitch, two, one single chain for a total of two, one single chain, total of three, one single chain, 
total of four, one single chain, total of five, and one single chain for a total of six. So since we're only going to be doing now one single chain into every stitch for the next eight rows, one way you can mark so you know how many rows that you have is just take, actually we'll just use a yarn marker, it's easier. Go ahead and turn it inside out. That way you're going to bury the initial yarn end that you had into your work and then this will be your right side. So you can go ahead and cut this inside yarn that you initially started with and you can use that as your yarn marker. And just put it where you left off and then into your next stitch you're going to do one single chain. And you're going to do one single chain in every stitch around and you're going to do that for eight rows and then come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you should be back of doing your one single chain in every stitch and you can check and see if you have your eight rows by using your yarn marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch and then finish off. So in the next stitch, go ahead and yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook and then we're going to finish off, yarn over and pull through and leave enough yarn for sewing onto the Yorkie. Okay, and then you can just take your tail, go to the back of the Yorkie, and then just sew wherever you would like to have the tail, just sew it onto the Yorkie, and then you're all done. And then come back and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so you should have finished sewing on the tail for the Yorkie and you're all done. So you can see the finished product of the Yorkie. And if you wanted, you can sew those two together, but I kind of like it just like that. And I can just kind of shape the Yorkie how I like it. And then you're all done.